All right, so the first page I want to talk about today is Out Bespoken. His page, it's about 50,000 followers, and he describes himself as Neapolitan Japan, which represents a fusion of Italian and Japanese style. And I think both in style and culturally, in so far as I know, Japan is very conservative, very muted, where Italy is more stylish, right? There's more flair, more color, more patterns. I think that style channels fall into kind of two categories. There's like super conservative, classic, and then there's like super stylish, super flair. And you know, on one hand, it's like great, I'd wear it for work, but it's also like not particularly interesting to me, it's nothing expressive. And on the other end, it's like there may be really interesting kind of creative decisions, but like I'd never wear that stuff, right? Like I, I wear the stuff for work, I have clients, like I need to look a certain way so people feel like I can trust this person, he's a stable, you know, individual. And I think Out Bespoken strikes that chord really well, where when I look at a lot of his outfits, I think like, I would actually wear that. I could wear that, I should say. I could wear it, my work would allow for it, but I also would, because I think it's really interesting and I think it looks really good. And I think there's really interesting plays on colors and textures and patterns going on in his work. Like for example, this outfit. The brown suit is a very muted, it's a very neutral, quiet color. Even the shirt is a little muted with just vertical stripes. But then you have the tie, which is this beautiful centerpiece to the whole outfit and the color works with the whole suit. And because everything else is so muted, the tie is allowed to exist without the whole thing kind of blowing up. He also has some simpler outfits like this one. I love this uh, with the black shirt with the crew neck. I know like some people think, oh, you can't wear a jacket with crew neck or whatever. Like, I think it can look terrible, right? But I think it can also look really well. Like Ryan Serhant, someone who wears it really well. Now he's also like a real hip dude and has like a really kind of flamboyant style, a lot of vibrant light colors. What I really like about what Sando's done here is he's combined using the crew neck with the jacket, which is still has some color and pattern to it to kind of match that level of casualness, but then it's a darker color. You have the darker, more formal trousers. The whole outfit's like casual enough, but still sophisticated. It's really easy just to like throw on a bunch of vibrant stuff and say you're like stylish, right? And like, then you look like kind of a clown. But I think it's a whole different creative challenge and a whole different skill to put together vibrant colors and interesting patterns into an outfit or insert them into an outfit but still have that outfit read as restrained, professional, and you know, put together thought thoughtfully. He also has this whole series of shoes and socks where he showcases shoes with socks. And it sounds so simple. It sounds like so simple that you'd think it's not worth doing. It's not common that people have a whole series that really looks into the specific relationship of like a pant cuff, a sock, and a shoe. Right, but there's so much going on there when you really dig into it. And it's kind of, I think, again, a sign of this guy really thinking with an unreasonable level of minute detail about what's going on in his outfits. I mean, honestly, I could make a whole video kind of like dissecting some of the outfits on his page. And maybe I will at some point, because I think like this sort of dissection and discussion of how clothing and textiles and colors and all these things come together I find super compelling, but for now I'm gonna cut it. You guys should totally check them out. So the next one we're gonna talk about today is A Southern Man. I think it's a really nice progression from Outbe Spoken because where Outbe Spoken is drawing quite broadly, right? He's drawing from two different entire cultures. Now we're talking about someone who's drawing inspiration from a very specific place and moment in time, which he describes quite aptly as classically Southern. This is referring to the Southern United States during a period probably from late 1800s to mid 1900s. It's a lot of hardy fabrics, often kind of textured wools, heavier coats, layers, felted hats, newsy hats, really earthy tones. So oranges, okras, browns. I think it kind of speaks to how style can be used as like a vehicle for exploring the intersection of time and place and culture and function. You know, a lot of these items really are the way they are because they were made in a, for reasons that were entirely functional and not considered stylish at all. It's not just like reenactment, right? He's not just like dressing 
the same way someone from the American South in you know the late 1800s would dress. He's kind of taking elements and motifs and materials from that time period and mixing them with a contemporary sensibility. And you can see this mixture in some of his pictures where, for example, this one, he has the bracers, the Newsies hat, the jacket is this very hardy kind of tweed-like texture, especially with the hat, it's like almost in costume territory. But then he has the shirt, which is quite a vibrant, bright color. Uh, it looks almost like it has like a pastel, very light blue tint to it. And then also the glasses hanging on it. And those two elements, I think, kind of make it a little more contemporary. You know, the watch as well, the bracelets, I think, also pull the outfit forward in time a little bit. Even though he's putting these things together and drawing inspiration on time and place when we talk about those things, ultimately he's still doing it in a way that it actually looks really good, right? Like here's one uh, outfit that I really like that I think is really emblematic of what he does. He has these different layers. You have the jacket, this hardy tweed, the scarf, you have the vest, and then you have the shirt underneath with one button undone, which again kind of makes it a little more cool right? God, look at this one outfit. I love this. Like his use of the dark outerwear with like the bright, slightly tinted shirt. Like I think it wouldn't work if it was white. I think it works specifically because it has that blue tint. It just like brings this freshness to the whole outfit that I think is super, super cool. Like the, he looks, he's a cool, cool looking dude. I'm like, I hope, I wish this guy was my professor. You know? <laughs> um, some of his scarves too. Oh my God, this is a beautiful scarf. Who's this by? I can't tell. I think this is also a good example. Like this is what you don't get from Row and Row and Alex Costa. All you see with those kinds of channels, and again, I'm not bashing because what they're doing is really interesting, but it's not like a focus on style. And what you get, you get those people who put together an outfit and you're like, oh, okay, that's like a cool outfit. But you don't really get to see what's so interesting about this craft of like putting together these items that have their own individual like historic meanings in a variety of ways, right? And you may pay a lot of attention to that, maybe you don't, but like this is a really good channel to show just how much something as innocuous as clothing can really be used to meditate on history and culture and place and family and you know ancestry you know i think that what he's doing is really profound in a really interesting way that goes even beyond just like can i put on a suit and like look good in it okay so this one this next one is really interesting so ugh, this is at oak nn this is nanat charun rock I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Bangkok-based preppy Ivy Sartorial. Every time I see Oak NN's work on my Instagram feed, I kind of feel like I'm like, I feel like I should unsubscribe to this. It's like not super relevant to me. I don't feel like I'm kind of like reading anything of like super intense depth the way we've talked about things in like really abstract, like deep conceptual terms with the past couple guys. But I never do, I never do unfollow it. There's something about how creative he is that I find so compelling. I mean, the outfits he puts together, some of them are wild. This beach blonde suit, I think is super interesting and super cool. The color is so fascinating. And then he has it with these white top loafers. This sport jacket is wild too. This like super pattern check is so interesting. It's almost like a stoplight, but a jacket. This one is so cool. I love this with like the sweater tied around. It's a very like country club, New England. It's got the blue shirt, super nautical. I think what he's doing is really, really smart, but in a way that isn't like as obvious as the other two pages we looked at. You know, there's like creative Instagram style pages that like do weird stuff, but oftentimes I just kind of feel like, all right, well, these are like wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle, but I don't get that from this. Just like the apparel he has, a certain like coats and jackets and scarves and so on you have to have a real eye for interesting textile products to even make the decision to like buy that it's almost like it you you have to be more open-minded like i've had to be more open-minded and i've felt myself becoming more open-minded looking at his work because sometimes i see things and i'm like i feel like that shouldn't work but it does work and i kind of then have to like create this math problem in my head of like figuring out why does it work and that kind of like opens me up to learning more about how something can work as an outfit versus cannot 
which I think, again, in this place is like a totally new depth of learning because the base level of all this stuff is like, oh, match your belt with your shoes, right? But now we're talking about like far more sophisticated levels of co cohesion. I don't know, maybe I'm not making any sense here. I'm kind of asking you guys as like viewers to sort of like read between the lines here of what I'm saying. Cause I, I mean, we're, we're exploring this together, right? Like I'm trying to figure this out kind of as we talk. Do these outfits work? Like, am I in my head? Maybe you guys are like, no, Chris, this like looks terrible. <laughs> you know, I feel like it works. And I don't know exactly why. Maybe this, maybe this guy's like the most, maybe this guy that I like least understand, maybe his page is the most profound of all of them. That's why I'm sitting here like bumbling, fumbling over my words, not able to figure out why exactly this freaking guy can't, why, why I still follow this guy. But obviously he like knows what he's doing. Dog, hey buddy. Wow, that was embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> well, that dog is taking off. Okay, anyways, I hope that was like coherent. This isn't a scripted video. I kind of just wanted to talk to you guys. I hope this works out well, but like, yeah, I don't know if that was coherent at all, but uh, check him out. His page is awesome. And yeah, all right, let's, go, let's move on. When most people think about American style, typically the image that comes to mind is sort of an older gentleman, kind of business, right? It's like a business gentleman. He is wearing like really big baggy suit, baggy trousers that are really long, really wide pant legs. And it's just sort of someone who's kind of like swimming in their suit a little bit. It's definitely not nowadays, kind of what you would think of as like the peak of fashion. But I bring it up because this next page we're gonna look at, which is at Dapper Passion, is really what I think of as the epitome of contemporary American style. Right, and when we look at his page, you see the first thing that stands out, which I think is so interesting, it looks remarkably plain and remarkably sort of basic. And someone might consider that a critique, but actually I think it's sort of a wonderful feature about American style and a reflection of American culture where we tend to not value that kind of like outward image, which is reflected in things like, you know, modern business leaders in tech, especially, they dress very casually business wear in general in America is trending more towards the casual. Actually, shoe lasts as well. So European shoe lasts, very curvy, large swooping angles. Asian shoe lasts, often very angular with slim kind of like sleek profiles to them. American last, Beckett Simonon being probably the best example of a well-executed American last, is very basic, it's very straightforward. It's well proportioned, it'll impress if it's noticed, but it's not gonna draw anyone's attention. And that is a really good representation of overall American style. And so this page, you can see this guy has very straightforward outfits. Often there's only one, two, or three colors. Sometimes there's a pocket square, usually it's just white. It's very unassuming. And I think that's what makes it really interesting. Some specific examples I wanna speak about from this page are actually the more simple ones where he's just wearing a shirt and trousers. Like often they have side adjusters, which again, elevates the whole casual outfit a little bit more. So I think it's so easy to get wrapped up in style and kind of think like, oh, we gotta wear a suit and the tie and the pocket square and this, that, the other. But sometimes it can be just as simple as a nice shirt and a nice pair of trousers. Like this look here, I think this is so great. Just a polo. The shirt pocket gives it a little more like sophistication. And then the pants are sort of, they almost have this like pajama-esque drawstring, which I really like, but he has the backdrop against the ocean. So it's like kind of linen-y, very breezy. And I think that is also something that Americans do really well is like making things very simple, but still look quite good. I think this guy has really great outfits for someone who's maybe not even that comfortable or maybe they're just like starting to wear suits and shirts. I think he puts together some combinations that are simple, but they're still kind of elegant in how subtle they are. All right, last page. At Women in Tailoring. This actually is not so much a style page as much as it is kind of lifestyle. Right, so unlike our other pages, there isn't really like modeling of clothes going on as much as there is modeling of lifestyle, food and life events and cars and things like that, whatever. 
uh, which is okay, but I think it's a, still a really good vehicle for this broader idea of women who are interested in tailored clothing. So first of all, for the longest time, I didn't even really know this existed. I didn't know that there is this whole genre of classic menswear tailored for women. And I think it's kind of a really good example of how really interesting creative results come often from putting together creative puzzles or challenges, right? So it's like, how do we take classic menswear, this apparel that's meant for men, and make that so it works on women? And some really interesting outfits come from that and really interesting, also like really interesting designs and concepts just from having like a woman's perspective. Here's a really good example. Probably what I think is most compelling in this whole outfit is the vest that has the three buttons, so it's like a truncated vest. And there's something about the color, it's like a slight, almost pearly, creamy off-white that I think works really well. And then the way the shawl lapel breaks in this like soft V, and then you have the unbuttoned shirt breaking in a soft V, and then the ascot underneath, like there's kind of a upward motion going on that starts at that vest. But I think that vest is so iconic of being like a really unique choice that's fitted for a woman and more, you know, I guess appropriate for a women's aesthetic. I, I don't know how to phrase it, but I think it looks really good. And I think it's a really interesting centerpiece to the whole outfit. And then another page I wanna shout out, which is also a really good example of women's tailoring. Oh my God, do I have it here? Ah, this is it. Victoria, I'm not gonna try to pronounce the page because I definitely can't pronounce that, but Victoria is this girl and she doesn't have a ton of photos, but like another really good example of the interesting creative outcomes that can result from women's decisions in tailoring. It's like the panda tie, which like, I'm not really a big fan of like gimmicky stuff, like gimmicky socks or gimmicky ties, but like there's something about that panda tie that kind of works. I don't know, like maybe it's partly because she's young and it's like a youthful thing, but it, it doesn't compromise the outfit, I feel like, in a way that gimmicky ties normally do. I, I want to know where she got that tie because that's like, so I, I want that tie so bad. This is a really good one here, this red double-breasted blazer. It's very like a brick red, and then you have the kind of charcoal, navy, silky, robe over top it adds like you know double breasted suit is a very like sturdy like solid outfit piece and then to complement that with a silky robe which is very free flowing it's very light has a lot of movement going on i think there's kind of an interesting dynamic going on there one more note i want to make on this whole idea of like women in tailoring and women in classic menswear uh il regalo which is a sock company it's, i think it's probably the most interesting sock company on the market and like a few leagues ahead of everyone else you know it's this company in japan and it's making dress socks that are typically worn by men and you'd expect that to be run by man right in the same way you'd expect a women's clothing company probably to be run by women and it's actually run by women it's run by junko if i'm pronouncing that right when i first found that out i thought that was like so cool and so kind of poetic in a way that you have like a bunch of these dress sock companies that are run by men, as you would expect. And they all do a good job, they have great products. And then suddenly you have this one company that just like blows them all out of the water and it's like, it's, it's socks made by a woman. <laughs> like how, I think that's so interesting and kind of a testament to how like the different perspective of women can bring a fresh creativity to products that are typically made by men. I don't know like what the origins of women and classic menswear are. I'm sure there's like some history there, but I think it's a great result. And, and it's, I think those pages are really great inspiration for anyone, whether you're man or woman. Yeah, that's the video guys. Thanks for watching. It was great to have you. I think I'd like to do something like this every once in a while, just to break the tempo of the more highly produced stuff. More of that stuff is coming on the way, but I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts, like what you thought of this. I don't know. I think these kinds of conversations are really interesting. You guys tell me, maybe I just sound like a weird, crazy person sitting around chatting, talking to, uh, to a camera, but that's also like a pretty accurate reflection of who I am. So, uh, yeah. I had a pretty busy past few months and recently I actually decided to cut back quite a bit on my main line of work in order to pursue just well and make more videos. And part of it's because I really enjoy it. Part of it's also, a big part of it is because of uh, the many messages you guys have left me, the emails you've sent, especially the comments you've left on my videos, some of them uh, incredibly nice, incredibly generous for you guys to say some of the things you do. 
And so I wanted to thank you. Um, I feel very blessed. I feel very grateful to have such an engaged audience that's as awesome as you guys are. Yeah, I'm really excited. I think it'll be a great thing. It was a big decision for me. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of you. Again, all of your support has meant more than you probably imagine it does. You know, I read all the comments and they're, they're, it's really great. You know, even the negative ones, even, you know, the guy who called me a man boy. I love you, I appreciate you, and I am definitely not still sour about that one. <laughs> Uh, but honestly, I, I, you guys are the best, and I really appreciate you. I feel like it's appropriate for me to also thank the companies that have supported Dresswell so far. They also play a really big role in my ability to do this and dedicate more time to this. Arterton, Paul Brungard, TLB Mallorca, Beckett Simonon. I'm not paid to say this, you know, I don't have to say this, but I. You know, those, they, they it really is amazing people behind those companies. And they took a risk in a channel that was really small, that did not have a lot of viewership and could have been a total flop for them. Cause I think they saw the vision, I hope. I like to think that. And yeah, so I wanna give a big thank you to all of them and you guys should show them some love. We got new videos coming soon. I'm super excited and I hope you're excited too. All right, well, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you soon.